Viva Las Vegas Viva Las Vegas How I wish that there were more than the 24 hours in the day One of the most exciting parts of my show for me is when I appear at the top of the show in a 45-foot AS350 Eurocopter. The thing is just huge. The thing weighs a ton. And it actually appears on a helipad surrounded by a fabric barricade on all four sides. It appears like in three seconds and I get out of it. It's, it's a fun ride. One of my favorite parts is uh, a piece uh, in which I create magic in a hotel lobby. When I was very young, I visited the old St. Francis Hotel in San Francisco, and I tried to actually take the amazement of a child seeing a, a large, functioning, classic hotel for the very first time and incorporate that into almost like a real-life scenario. I, I try to give the illusion that it is happening in a real environment. I want you to just pick a card, it can be any card, doesn't matter which card it is. Go ahead and take a peek at the card. I came up with a concept that, that we're all very, very excited about. Don't let me see the card. Something completely different than any uh, one has ever done, certainly in Las Vegas. I'm going to actually start my show where I'm not even in the theater. Go ahead and put it back in the deck if you would for me, please. And I want you to shuffle the cards up. All right, go ahead and shuffle and give them a good shuffle. The show will begin when everyone sits down in the theater and a video screen comes down and they will show me performing some street magic, some really intimate close-up sleight of hand magic one-on-one -on -one with my audience. What's amazing is people are 360 degrees around me. I tell you what, I'll do something a little cooler. Janine, tell me, is that your card? The aspect of danger is always there in the large-scale escapes. For example, the Blades of Death Challenge, it's a 30-foot tower, and connected to the top of the 30-foot tower is a center shaft, and connected to that is six stainless steel saw blades. They're three feet in diameter. They're menacing, they're massive as well. My legs are shackled, my arms are shackled, and there's a double restraint that goes around my midsection, and then there's a shadow barricade that contains me um, within the apparatus. I only have just a few moments to make my escape. motorcycles. I love, love fast motorcycles. And I have a pure steel motorcycle. It's, it's a really incredible bike. It has all flames on it and everything. I drive it out on stage. And I drive it into a framework that lifts up 25 feet in the air. And in the blink of an eye, it actually falls apart and I vanish in midair. And appear right in the middle of the audience on the motorcycle. It is one wild ride. I guess it's been uh, almost 10 years ago. I decided on something, I, I wanted to do something different than everyone else was doing. And uh, back then, you know, everyone was doing the, the sawing a woman in half and then making the girls disappear and appear. And the concept of actually making a full-size Beechcraft Baron 58 twin-engine airplane appear it just it captivated me. And it took, uh, it took almost two years to put everything together. It's an amazing feeling to actually see it and perform it for the first time. After I created the illusion of the appearing airplane, I wanted to do something uh, aeronautically themed that was just very different. And uh, I talked to another friend of mine and I said, I actually want to walk through a jet engine from the back to the front visibly while the blades are spinning at Mach 1. He said, you're crazy. You can't do this. And uh, I actually uh, I went out and I bought a true jet engine, a 747 turbine engine. It was very difficult to acquire one of those. And it took almost a year and a half to put everything together. And it's, uh, it's pretty incredible. When 
people leave my performance, I, I want them to actually be touched with emotion. I want them to be excited. I want them to feel things that they've never felt before. And one of the most incredible things I love to see, and I see it all the time, I see it every night, I can take someone that's 99, someone that's 83, or someone that's 54, and I take them back where they're a kid. And that wonderment and that amazement that comes out of their eyes is the greatest feeling in the world.